I want to speak a little bit this morning about what I feel is going on and where we're at. And uh, so as a, as a, as a church, we, we can navigate our way through some things and, and perhaps allow our faith to rise and, and put off some things that need to be put off and put on some things that need to be put on and, and start to speak uh, with authority, speak knowing that God's with us. You see, Jesus has got revival on his mind. We've got to, we've got to somehow or other indelibly print some of these things into our mind when we want revival, we want to see the soul, you know, soul saved and everything else. And we think perhaps God doesn't care, but God cares more about it than you and I would ever care about it. God has got revival on his mind. As a matter of fact, revival flows through his veins. Revi everything about Jesus is about revival. Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. Jesus came to set captives free. Jesus came to, uh, to help people. His blood was shed to pay the ransom for mankind. And I, I don't know about you, but for that, I'm just so thankful that we've got a God that loves us so much that He would give His Son to die for us. And there's some things there as the enemy comes in at times to, to, dis, to distract us or discourage us or whatever it might be. Sometimes we lose the picture. But we've got to realise, we've got to paint another picture again perhaps that Jesus has got souls on His mind. Jesus has got revival on His mind. Everything about Jesus, everything that He did while He was on planet Earth was to uh, glorify His Father and set people free and build a powerful church that was going to annihilate everything that the enemy has for mankind. There's an enemy out there we can't say He doesn't exist. He does exist. But Jesus paid a ransom for mankind. The wages of sin is death and we've all sinned and fallen short. We all deserve to die, but Jesus came and He died for us. He died for all sinners. We all need a Saviour. We all need a Redeemer. I am redeemed. Anybody else redeemed here today? Turn to somebody and say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been set free from sin. The power of sin is broken over my life. I can triumph over all the works of Satan. The only time when the enemy can come in, he, comes, he goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And what he does is he comes and he tricks us. The Bible says that we shouldn't be unaware of Satan's cunning devices. He is very, very cunning. And he'll, if he can, he'll put you into a hissy fit. If he can, he'll put you into a negative state. If he can, he'll, he'll rob you of your draw, joy and your victory. If he can, he'll come to, to pull you down and destroy you. But I want to tell you that Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. Amen. More abundant life. That's what it's all about. So revival throws, flows through his veins. You know, Jesus said these words to Nicodemus. He said, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. That's in, in uh, John 3, 3 to 8. And Jesus was talking to them. Nicodemus came and, and he started to share about eternal life and, and entering into something. And he said, hey, you cannot enter in without first being born again. If you're not born again, you do not understand. You have no real concept of what God is really doing. All we have is mental assent. And then when, when people put up a good argument, you, you're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by every little suggestion, people are tossed to and fro. But I want to tell you, when you're born again, when you get born again, born of the Spirit of God, then the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. And we know because we know because we know. And the devil cannot find a foothold. When he comes to the, uh, have a go at you, when he comes to say, you know, this or that, he could have... Most Surely some of the musicians are going through it right now because of, you know, what was going on up there. When the enemy comes in like that, you just got to say, enemy, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Whatever you're saying to me, you cannot tell the truth. You can only tell lies. So I'm not going to accept what you're telling me, but I'm going to accept what Jesus says. Amen. I'm going to believe what God says. 
And the enemy comes in to distract and destroy and, and do lots of things. But I want to tell you, Jesus is on the throne and he's going to, I believe, bring a revival to our nation and uh, the nations of the world. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will build my church and the gates of Hades or the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then it says, and I will give you. See, it's not just a matter of, pardon me, God saying, well, this is what I'm gonna do. But he says, this is what's going to happen on this planet. I will build my church. I'm gonna tell you, friends, hell will have to freeze over before those words are, have got no power in them. You've got to remind yourself and I've got to remind myself, it is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. So whatever the enemy throws against the church, God will not allow it to prevail over us if we can keep our eyes on Jesus. If we let the prevailing get inside of us when he comes against us and we accept what he's trying to put on us and we say yes to him, the enemy, well, we will go down. But when we say no to the enemy, devil, you are a liar, you are a thief, you are a cheat. You've only come to rob, to kill and destroy, but my God has come to set me free, amen. I am free today in Jesus' name. That's where the victory comes and we've got to continue to speak what God says about us. And then it says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, in Matthew 18, 18, it says, assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you in verse 18, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Verse 20 says this, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Jesus is in the midst of us. Jesus is here, not just because he's got nothing else to do, but he's here to help us triumph over every negative force that would attack you. He's here to protect us. He's here to speak to us. He's here to lift us up. He's here to empower us. He's here to cause us to overcome, to triumph over the works of the enemy. He's here to reveal the truth that's in the Word of God. See, a lot of people believe a lie. A lot of people have been conned. The enemy comes in and, and comes and to destroy the work of God. We've got to remember that Jesus is in the midst of us. And whatever you allow on earth, God has to allow. I believe it's time for the church to rise up and speak with authority. I'm going to be speaking on authority over the next few weeks. I'm going to start to speak about a few things that I believe are very, very important to us. But we've got to be able to stand up and speak with authority, knowing where we stand. Know that we stand on solid ground, amen. We're not on the sand, we're not somewhere hoping, but we've got to stand. You see, the enemy comes to erode our faith. The enemy comes to, to, to try to put little traps in there where we start to doubt the Word of God. But I believe that God is going to build a church that will know because they know, because they know that God's Word will never, ever fail. God's Word will never, ever fail. If I can get that into my grip, then when the enemy comes, you see, the enemy will come. The enemy will come. I'm sad to say that, but he will come. And when he comes, it's how we handle 
His attack on our lives, whether we win or lose. Whether we win or lose. Whatever you allow on your life, God has to allow. Because you see, He's given us the ability to rise up and speak against it. And we've got to learn to be able to speak. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the blood cries out, it is finished. The blood cries out. I want to ask us this morning, what will it take to see the move of God that we all long for? I spoke about this a few weeks ago. What will it take to see the move of God that we all long for? How many people are longing for a move of God? Come on, truly. Well, you see, the move of God <laughs> will only happen through us. See, we're the ones that have got to start to change the way we speak and the way we allow things to, to uh, cause us to think wrong. To think not according to the Word of God, but according to how I feel or what I think's going on. What will it take to see a move of God that we all long for? Does anyone long for a move of God? Of course we do. First question we've got to ask ourselves is, is there anything wrong with God? <laughs> How many people say, nope? <laughs> well, if there's nothing wrong with God, what's wrong? <laughs> if there's nothing wrong with God, what's wrong? That we're not seeing the manifestation that we know can happen. As you read the Tommy Hicks reports, as you, as you read uh, about the guy Miller, is it Miller? Yes, yes. Miller. I met this man, I've, I've spoken with this man, I've listened to him preach, I've preached in front of him, I've been with this man, this man. But you see, he had an attitude. Can I say attitude? attitude. An attitude about God that the church has drifted away from. Because we've got this sort of sloppy attitude. But when he came and he ministered with us, he came in a three-piece suit. He dressed up to the best he could dress. And he stood there and he honoured his king and he honoured his God and he honoured his Lord. And for the period of time when he was with us, guess what? We all wore three-piece suits. <laughs> we all dressed up. It was stinking hot, no air conditioning, but there he was. He said, if you were going to see the Queen of England, would you, how would you approach the Queen of England? He said, I come to, to meet with my Saviour, my God, my champion, and I honour him. He is the King of kings. And he respected his God in such a way. And it was just a little thing that he did that, that to him meant a lot. And I'm not saying for one minute today that if we all dress up and, and in our three-piece suits to come to church, that most probably won't change anything because you see what this man had was an attitude of love and respect and honour. And I believe that one of the things we've got to start to do again in the church is honour the King of kings and the Lord of lords and reverence His presence in Jesus' name, amen. And honour what He's done for us and love on Him and worship Him and, 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 and just write the rest of yourself. <laughs> Amazing man of God that, that, that had been involved in that Argentina revival and had a lot to do with it. There's obviously nothing wrong with God, so there's something wrong. Is there something wrong with the Word then? No, 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 no. Did Jesus do enough by going to a whipping pole and paying for our sicknesses and our diseases? Did he do enough by hanging on a cross and dying and giving his life a ransom for mankind? Did he do enough or didn't he do enough? Is there something that still has to be done? All done. It is finished. It is finished. So this is where we've got to start to look, not with a, with a, 
a negative thing, but just say, God, God, I, I, want, I want to start to change. I want the shackles and the boundaries, the things that are around my life to be broken. I want to come before you with thanksgiving. Lord, I want to get into your word. I want, to, I want to, your presence around my life. I'm hungry for a move of God and start to create around your own atmosphere, around your own life, an acknowledgement for God and honor and respect. And we don't laugh and we don't joke and we don't do things that are silly. But honor the house of God, amen? Respect the house of God and, the, and everything that God has. Is the Holy Spirit on holiday? Or is the church asleep? Maybe, eh? You know, why, why, why? You know, we come to a place where, where we, the church, where things start happening. And let me say it again, things will happen. Is it okay to say that? Is that negative saying that? Things happen. Bad things happen. And we start saying, why? Why? Why did that happen to me? Why, why, why? Why, why doesn't my boat sell? <laughs> what? Why, why did that happen? Why, 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 why? And you see, when this happens, thinking of Shelley as she passed away, why, why, why? And what happens if we're not careful that when we start looking like that and we start seeing that sort of stuff, we start, the enemy comes and starts to erode away at our faith and his purpose and his plan is for us to get to a point where we say, healing isn't for today. Well, we get to a place where we say the Holy Spirit isn't, isn't available today. Or God doesn't care. Remember the, the disciples, they're in the boat and, it, and, the, and the water was rough and, and here they are, they, they were with Jesus, but they woke him up and they said to Jesus, don't you care, we're perishing. And we can get the attitude, the church can get an attitude, perhaps God doesn't care. The only thing we can build around our lives is all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purposes. And we don't know what God knows. We don't understand what God understands. We don't know the fruit that could come from Shelley's death. We don't know the fruit that could come out of a situation or a circumstance that you break through, amen. We don't understand at times. We don't know, but we've got to be careful. If we don't, let the enemy get in because the enemy wants to chip away at our faith. Faith in God, amen. Only unbelief can stop us. Can I say this? We must let the fire of God touch us. I want to say this again and again and again. We must allow the fire of God to touch us. The only thing that's going to change us is the Holy Ghost. The power of God let loose inside a human vessel. He will expel everything that's got to be expelled. <laughs> he, will, he will trump every lie that the devil's ever told you. He will do whatever he can. We must let the fire of God touch us. Don't hold back. Many, many people are dramatically changed forever and ever on the altar. We've come to a place where I can remember the Holy Spirit fire, the anointing of God coming, altars filled with people. 
The altars of God filled to overflowing with people running to the altars. Then all of a sudden, you know, we saw, I know in my own life, sometimes they'd have an altar call about something and I'd go out there and get prayed for. And on the way back, the guy'd say, blah, blah. And I'd turn and go back. Sometimes three and four times in a night. Just wanting God. Hungry for God, amen? Seen children's camps where, where hundreds and hundreds of children just flooding out to the altars for prayer. Just allowing the Holy Spirit to wash over them. Being over in Pensacola and places like that, great revivals, Argentina, I've been over there in that revival. Been ministering to thousands and thousands of people and seeing come, people coming out to the altars and, and just allowing the anointing of God to wash over their lives. Tears flowing down their faces. Something touching them on the inside. Friend, Christianity is not a tag that you can put on yourself. It's an experience. It's a lifestyle. It, it's, 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 it's life itself. But what happens is then the, 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 the churches. Many churches, they, they didn't want the, 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 the this and the that, you know, people falling over and snot and tears and messing up their, their church. So they start to talk against it. And they start saying things about altars and they start saying stuff. And all of a sudden you find that you get affected by that and you find yourself backing away from things. But I want to tell you, friends, it's not a time to back away. It's a time to go forward again, amen. It's a time to say, come on, hit the altars. Let the Spirit of God get around your life. Let God get in there. We must be touched by the fire of God. Light the fire again, Lord. Light the fire. We need a mighty fire of God to touch us. And I believe that it's going to happen, amen, Leave. I believe it. Dramatically change forever and ever and ever. I believe the altars will be filled with believers and unbelievers alike. One of the great things that amazed me with Pensacola we went over there to that revival and, and watched them as they queued up by the hundreds to get into the meetings. People just lined up, wanting to get into the meetings. They opened up the door and there was a rush. People rushing into the presence of God, wanting the presence of God. People being, you know, they'd make an altar and people would just rush out to the altars before the altars calls were ever made sometimes. People were just weeping in their seats. I want to tell you, God loves an atmosphere. Is that okay? An atmosphere. You create an atmosphere around your life. You create an atmosphere. You can create an atmosphere that people will shun you or keep away from you. You can build an atmosphere where people want to be around you. You can build an atmosphere around your life. God, I want you so much. God, I, I don't care what it takes, but here I am, Lord. And God, you build that atmosphere and God says, I'm going to visit that man. I'm going to visit that woman. I'm going to visit those people because they're hungry. They want something. Amen. It's not just a matter of, you know, coming to church and having a, having a morning massage message. I mean, <laughs> going home but it's been impacted by the power of God and God getting around our lives, the anointing, the presence of God. I'm believing that we're gonna see it. And Pensacola there, as people would come out to the front, as people would, would come there in tears and goodness knows what, as people were praying over them and loving on them and ministering life to them and goodness knows what else. And then they'd have a water baptismal service after the meeting. Uh, and as they were baptizing people, they might baptize a hundred people in a night. And while they're baptizing them, every person would testify. And what amazed me was 99 out of the hundred people that testified were all backslidden or dried out Christians that had lost their passion, lost their fire, but they'd come to Pensacola and God fired them up again. And they wanted to go through the waters of baptism and they testified about a new love that they had for their God. Shakabundi. 
That's church, amen? That's church. Finding something beautiful and something that's so different. I believe that we're going to see altars filled with believers and unbelievers alike. Believers coming to Christ and uh, unbelievers coming to Christ rather. And, and believers being refreshed. And the fire of God touches us. Amen. We must be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says Jesus will fill you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Christians need to be refilled. Or you can say, oh yeah, 20 years ago, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Chakabundi. In Acts 4.31, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Friend, if ever there's a time we need the Holy Spirit that will cause us to speak with boldness. Can I hear an amen? Amen. To speak the Word of God with authority, with boldness, something that will will shake us again and and ignite something on the inside. Friend, I want to tell you, if you you need something ignited on the inside, you come to the right place. Get ignited with the Holy Ghost that, that we can rise up and go from this place with boldness, with authority, amen, with the victory that Christ alone can give us place was all was filled and they and they spoke the word of God with boldness this was the disciples who received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost they witnessed in Acts 2 44 3,000 salvations you think that'd keep you going for a while wouldn't you <laughs> Acts 4 4 5,000 men saved but in Acts 4 31 they needed a top up Don't be so proud that you don't think you need a (laughs) top-up. Anybody need a top-up? I need a top-up. John 7, 37 says this, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, he didn't say, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, if you you really feel like it, you can just come in. If if, 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 if it touches your fancy. You know, you, 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 you If you are thirsty. (laughs) Because he knew that there's a bunch of thirsty and hungry people out there. I don't know about you, but I am thirsty. I am hungry for a revival. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes on me, and as, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart, out of his belly, will flow rivers of living waters. Friend, I want to tell you today, there's a cry going out from heaven. There's a cry going out from the Holy Ghost. There's a cry going out from the fire of God, I believe, to the church today, crying out for people to get thirsty and hungry and come to Jesus. Hallelujah. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Where is the church today? Are we hungry? Are we thirsting? I want to say this as a prophetic statement. We are being trained. I want to say it loud and clear. We are are being trained to tread on serpents and scorpions and giving us power to take back what the devil has stolen. We are being trained, amen, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan And we are being trained to take back what the devil has stolen from the church. I believe that Jesus paid the price in full for every sickness and disease. I believe that Jesus wants 
to be, us to be delivered. But let me say this too. That death as we know it is different to the way God knows it. Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Paul said as a young man, I would rather go and be with him, but I have to stay here to be with you because I've got a message. Don't be discouraged by what we see or what we hear, but be encouraged by the Word of God today. We are not going to be dominated, controlled, put down by what is going on. What's going to control our lives is what we know. And we know because we know that our God reigns. Our God reigns. Jesus, on the last day of the feast, he stood and he cried out with a loud voice. If anybody thirsts, let him come to me. Friend, the food and the provision that God wants to give you, in the natural, if it was a food line, people would rush to get a bread roll, a cup of coffee, whatever was being handed out. But when it comes to the spiritual, we hold back. Because you see, you think you can survive without it. You think you can survive without it. Can I say this, friends? There are many today that are on the that are perishing along the side of the road because they needed a drink of the Holy Ghost. Amen? I want you to stand to your feet with me right now. I don't know about you and I haven't preached for an altar. I haven't preached just for whatever. But I want to say this, friend. If you're serious, I tell this story quite often about a little girl, nine years of age, that was dying of a kidney failure. She's on dialysis every day. She went to a little church in, Bris in Brid Bridgman Downs. No water baptizing her. And as they were water baptizing her, they said they gave her the mic, a nine year old girl. They said, Is there anything you'd like to say? She said, Yes. It's a little girl that was dying, remember. And she took the microphone and she said it with a voice that still, the, the, the words still go through my life and through my mind with an impact. She said, I want the devil and God to know that I am serious. God, I believe, wants people, wants to know we're serious, amen? That's all. I want the devil and God to know I am serious. Are you serious? Are you serious? Do you, do you need a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost today? Do you need, you need a fresh, fresh wind to blow over you today? If you do, get out of your seat and come out the front and stand in the presence of God. Stand in His presence and don't be embarrassed, don't be shy, don't, don't hold back.